My name is Dr. Al George. I'm a professor and chairman of the Department of Pharmacology at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago. The uh, research that we currently do on AHC involves two broad areas. First, we are interested in understanding the basic molecular and cellular defects that cause the disease. Secondly, we are exploring the feasibility and potential effectiveness of specific genetic and molecular techniques that could be one day therapeutically valuable. The work we've done in both areas exploits a specific and novel cellular platform called IPSC technology. That's an abbreviation for induced pluripotent stem cells. This is a type of cell that we can derive from a patient's blood sample, and it gives us the opportunity in the laboratory to create neurons that carry the ATP183 mutation that causes the disease. These cells have provided us an opportunity to explore the primary molecular defect in the ATP183 protein and understand how that defect relates to changes in neuron function. We also use this platform for exploring the feasibility and potential effectiveness of different genetic and molecular techniques that might one day be therapeutic. We are currently exploring the feasibility of three different genetic methods to correct the underlying molecular defect in AHC. The first approach is to provide human neurons with additional normal copies of ATP183 using a viral gene delivery system. That system uses a virus known as the adeno-associated virus, abbreviated AAV, which has been used in many other neurodevelopmental disorders successfully to demonstrate proof of concept of this type of gene therapy. The second approach we're using is to try to suppress the mutant copy of ATP183 in neurons using a method called antisense oligonucleotides. These are small synthetic stretches of DNA that can enter cells, find the target, and turn it off. Finally, in a recent collaboration with investigators at the Broad Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts, we started to test the feasibility of using gene editing techniques to change the mutation in ATP183 back to the normal sequence. Hopefully, one of these, or potentially more than one of these approaches will prove successful in the laboratory and can move on to uh, studies that may lead to a therapy in humans. I first learned about AHC from a colleague at Vanderbilt University who called me one day out of the blue to tell me about a young boy he just made the diagnosis in. So after a furious internet search, I learned about this rare neurodevelopmental disorder, which at that time did not have a known genetic cause. For the next several months and a couple of years, we invested a lot of effort in my lab exploring ways that we could use our expertise in ion channel disorders to try to advance the field. So initially, I will say it was a scientific curiosity that propelled our interest in studying HC. But over time, after meeting families and learning about the disease at a more personal level, we became more motivated conquered the condition in some way to help improve the lives of children with this condition. It's been an honor and a privilege to get to know so many families in the AHC community. Unlike other research projects in my laboratory and throughout my career, where the motivation was purely to publish the next paper and to get the next grant. This is different for us. We have really 
been inspired by the families who we've met and meeting their children and understanding the gravity of the situation. We want things to move faster. And I know it's frustratingly slow for those not involved in research on a daily basis. Uh, we're doing all we can. We would love to do more. I am grateful for all of the support that the AHC community has provided our laboratory over the years. And this has been a great partnership, which I hope to continue and to all work together toward that ultimate goal of finding a cure for AHC.